Hello, welcome to Quick Anatomy Revision. I am Dr. Poonam Kharab Jango. This video is on carpal tunnel, which is another very important topic from upper limb, and it often comes as a short note in exams. The answer has to be written under the following headings. First is what exactly is carpal tunnel and where it is located. Then the structures which pass through this tunnel. structures which pass superficial to flexor reticulum and the applied anatomy that is carpal tunnel syndrome so that's what we are going to see in this video what is carpal tunnel and where exactly it is located carpal tunnel it is an osseofibrous tunnel so that means it is bounded by osseo means bones and in this case these are carpals and a fibrous structure which is flexor reticulum so in these two pictures it can be seen this is the small space is the carpal tunnel and we can see that the roof of the carpal tunnel is formed by this fibrous band which is nothing but condensation of deep fascia here also it can be seen so this is flexor reticulum because it is present on the flexor surface and here we can see these are the carpals and they have a concave anterior surface and because of this the tunnel is formed so floor and walls of the carpal tunnel they are formed by concavity of carpal bones let us see where exactly is the flexor reticulum attached on the carpal bones we all know that there are in total eight carpal bones and they are arranged in two rows proximal and distal each row containing four carpal bones so flexor reticulum is attached to the four pillars of the carpal bones that means two lateral most carpal bones in the proximal and distal row and two medial most carpals in the proximal and distal row so laterally it is attached to the scaphoid bone in the proximal row and crest of trapezium in the distal row on the medial side it is attached to pisiform bone in the proximal row and hook of hamate which can be seen here also hook of hamate in the distal row let us look at the structures passing through the carpal tunnel all the tendons of the long flexors of fingers and thumb along with one nerve that is median nerve pass through this tunnel so the structures are the median nerve four tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis muscle and four tendons of flexor digitorum profundus muscle all these tendons they are enclosed in a common synovial sheath which is known as ulnar bursa then we have the tendon of flexor pollicis longus for the thumb and this it has its own synovial sheath and this is known as radial bursa this diagram is cross section passing through the carpal tunnel so here we can see these are the carpal bones this green structure is the flexor reticulum this is thinner eminence so muscles there and this is hypothenar eminence that means this is lateral side and this is medial side now this space small space which can be seen here this is the carpal tunnel so here we can see these are the four tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis which are arranged in two rows anterior and posterior the tendons which will pass to the middle and the ring finger they are placed anteriorly and the tendons for the index and little finger they are placed more posteriorly still posterior to the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis we have the four tendons for the four fingers of flexor digitorum profundus it can be seen here this e shaped synovial sheath this blue structure which can be seen here which is enclosing all these eight tendons this is the ulnar bursa now lateral to these tendons we can see here this is the tendon of flexor pollicis longus and it is enclosed in its own synovial sheath which is known as radial bursa it can be seen there the median nerve is passing through this restricted space which is already containing nine tendons and this median nerve may get compressed if there is swelling 
due to involvement of any of the soft tissue which passes through the carpal tunnel. This diagram shows the ulnar bursa and the radial bursa. So here this is the ulnar bursa which can be seen uh, to enclose all the eight tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis as well as flexor digitorum profundus. And it is continuous with the digital synovial sheath of the little finger. This is radial bursa which is enclosing the tendon of flexor pollicis longus. Let us now look at the structures that pass above the flexor retinaculum because these structures will not be involved in carpal tunnel syndrome. So from lateral to medial these are the first one is the palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve. These are superficial so cutaneous nerves have to be there and then we have the tendon of palmaris longus and it is followed by palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve. So the first three you can remember it this way. This is the lateral side, so the median nerve is placed lateral to the ulnar nerve. So the first will be palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve, most lateral. Then you can remember there will be another cutaneous branch, palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve and between these two you can put the tendon of palmaris longus. When we come to more medial side, then we have two more structures and these are the ulnar artery and ulnar now, so when we start from lateral, you just remember A comes first. So ulnar artery will be first and ulnar nerve will be most medial structure. So these structures from lateral to medial are palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve, tendon of palmaris longus, palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve, ulnar artery and ulnar nerve. As I said earlier, that median nerve along with nine tendons passes through the restricted space of the carpal tunnel. If there is any involvement of the soft tissue, if there is accumulation of fluid or swelling in the soft tissues within the carpal tunnel, it will lead to compression of the median nerve. And the signs and the symptoms which are seen following compression of median nerve, they are called as or they comprise carpal tunnel syndrome. So what are the causes for compression of median nerve in the carpal tunnel? They can be osteoarthritis which involves carpal bones, dislocation of lunate bone. This is the most commonly dislocated carpal bone and then it can be tenosynovitis that is inflammation of synovial sheets of long flexor tendons. We have seen that ulna bursa and radial bursa. Mexedema could be there and there could be fluid retention in the pregnancy. So what are the characteristic features of carpal tunnel syndrome? Median nerve supplies the muscles of the thinar eminence. So there will be weakness and wasting of thinar eminence. It can be seen here. It is flattened here. And the thumb will remain in adducted position. Now why this is so? Because there is one thinar muscle that is known as adductor pollicis. It is not supplied by median nerve. In fact, it is supplied by ulna nerve. So because of unopposed action of adductor pollicis muscle, the thumb will remain in adducted push position and this is known as ape thumb deformity because apes cannot oppose their thumbs to other digits. What will be the sensory loss? Median nerve that supplies lateral two-third of the palm and palmar surface of lateral three and a half digits. It also provides sensory innervation to the nail beds and the proximal phalanges on the dorsal aspect of the hand of lateral three and a half digits. So as a result of carpal tunnel syndrome, the patient may feel either tingling sensation or numbness in the skin or loss of sensations over palmar surface of the lateral three and a half digits. The lateral two third of the palm, there will be no sensory loss. Why is it so? Because this area is supplied by palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve, which passes above the flexor retinaculum. We have already seen this is one of the structures that passes above the flexor retinaculum. So, this will not be affected whereas 
the nerves which supply the sensory innervation to the three and a half lateral three and a half digits they arise after the median nerve crosses the carpal tunnel some vasomotor changes will be also seen the skin over the palmar surface of lateral three and a half digits of hand they will feel warmer because of arteriolar dilatation and they will be drier also because of the absence of sweating and this occurs because of loss of sympathetic innervation the sympathetic postganglionic fibers they will be accompanying median nerve to supply these structures and we all know that sympathetic innervation is vasomotor pseudomotor and pilomotor so that's why arteriolar dilatation would be there as well as no sweating would be there thanks for listening you can also visit my website anatomyqa.com for important questions and answers of anatomy i'll put a link of this website in the description also